morning. Good morning. Good morning. Grace and peace to you, all of you, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I welcome you home again to Grace Church. Some of us haven't seen this room in quite a number of weeks and months. And I, I, I thank uh, uh, Sid and the worship team and our reopening team and Lori for taking all of our temperatures. I thought she should take our blood pressures next week. <laughs> and, and so we all know we're healthy. Uh, and uh, if, uh, I, I want to thank you for following the guidelines that you see posted in your bulletin. Yeah, this is not necessarily fun. Uh, we're not necessarily looking forward to wearing our man face mask to church and sitting in distance as we are, but we know we're doing it for each other. We're doing it to keep each other safe and each other well. And if you do have any concerns, if you have any needs, if you have any questions about the guidelines and what we need to be doing for each other, I hope you'll, I hope you will, you will ask. For our gathering words of worship, if you join me, give thanks to God and call on Christ's name. We proclaim God's grace and sing God's praise. Seek the Lord who is here with us now. We rejoice in God's glory and strength. Remember what we did in the summer, clapping during the refrain? Can we do that again? Get to the refrain, we're going to go. Please listen to the prayer of preparation. 
Eternal God, in the reading of the scripture, may your word be heard. In the meditations of our hearts, may your word be known. And in the faithfulness of our lives, may your word be shown. Amen. Amen. The first reading of scripture today comes from the book of Romans, chapter 14, verses 1 through 12. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. And those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister, or you? Why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. Our second reading is from the Gospel Matthew, chapter 18, verses 21 to 35. If you are able, please rise or sit quietly in Jesus' feet. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you seventy to seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave <coughs> fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he says, pay what you owe. Then this fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison <coughs> until he could pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in his anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my Heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Here ends the reading of the word. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Lori, certified lay minister. This afternoon at our district conference Zoom meeting, Lori will be recognized, and, and she will be, I forget the correct word, but uh, 
recognized, acknowledged, uh, commissioned uh, as a certified lay minister at here at Grace Church. Uh, so there's, so she'll be joined by everyone around the district in, in that Zoom meeting. And not only that, but Sid here from Grace and Glenn from uh, uh, from, from Simpson uh, will be providing all the music at the Zoom. Uh, they're going to zoom in and, and be the music today. At, at, uh, so that's pretty neat. <coughs> and uh, so, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. 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 Among the little things I found uh, with my mom's memorable writings and thoughts was this magazine clipping. Nothing is easier than. Nothing is easier than misunderstanding people. Nothing is easier than putting the worst construction on whatever anyone says. Attributing imaginary and altogether wrong motives to the words and deeds of others. Assuming that we are right. Nothing is easier than putting two and two together to make five. Finding fault. Nothing is easier than jumping to the wrong conclusions. Nothing is easier than forgetting what we have been, what we have told everyone else to remember. I find so much truth in those words. It's evident in politics and personal life and church life. So quick are we to jump to wrong conclusions. The mere mention of labeling a person lends itself to conclusions and assumptions and false impressions. You know, Republican, Democrat, black, white, Christian, Jewish, Muslim, progressive, liberal, traditional, conservative, Roman, Catholic, and Methodist, socialist. These are all red flag labels that set our mind to impulsive conclusions about the person. The labels referred to in Romans chapter 14 were vegetarians of all things. And those who considered some days to be more sacred than others. And those were the hot issues debated in the church at Rome. Seemingly nothing when compared to the social issues that strike at the heart of our church and nation these days. Judgment abounds among the disagreements. In the heartbreak, it's hard to hear what Paul says telling us to strive for the things that bring peace and the things that build each other up, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. At an early age, my daughter decided that she was a vegetarian. Is it at all a surprise that for 24 years she has eaten at the same table with a family of omnivores, eaters of all food? Paul takes two simple little examples, issues that were apparently hot and contentious, and with blood pressures rising in the church, that's why we need to get our blood pressures checked. Yeah. So he says to the church, deal with it. <coughs> Welcome the person who is weak in faith, but not in order to argue about differences of opinion. Paul says, church, you got an attitude. It's the I know best attitude. It's the I'm okay, you're not okay attitude. It's the I will show you the better, the best, the right way attitude. How swelled are we in our heads? How conceited are we that I think I know it all, that I got it right, and you all got it wrong? The Christian with an attitude hurts the brother or sister who feels and thinks differently. Now, we may be disagree with each other. Paul's not arguing with that. The church has differing opinions about different things. And you may hold to differing opinions. You may, someone here may vote, vote for Biden, and someone else may vote for Trump. But let's not be judging each other on a presidential election. It's important to know that the vegetarians spoken of in Romans 14, is not eating meat for dietary health purposes. The concern is that the meat is in the market. Whether you go to Trader Joe's or Best Market or Stop and Shop, the food was likely offered to an idol before it got to market. And what some 
and for some to eat me offered to an idol was to disrespect God. You must have no other gods before me. Do not make an idol for yourself. With these two commands echoing in their heads, you have to think twice about eating a hamburger. To other Christians, only God was God, and meat was meat, and idols were false, so if the meat was good, it was barbecue time. And that led to disagreement in the church, and sometimes judgment too. It happened too with those who practiced some days to be more sacred than the others, and others who considered all days to be the same. And this was not only the this, that, this was not the only time that Paul had expressed his concern. To the Galatians, Paul wrote, You observe religious days and months and seasons and years. Well, I'm afraid for you. Perhaps my hard work for you has been for nothing. And again, to the Colossians, So don't let anyone judge you about eating or drinking or about a festival, a new moon observance, or Sabbaths. What's debated here is not the keeping of the Sabbath to keep it holy or, other, or celebrating other sacred days, but the strict and rigid laws and rituals, if not kept to exact expectations. That if you weren't going to do it right, you would be considered less than the rest of us, less Christian, less spiritual, less worthy. To the Romans, Paul makes no effort siding with those who was right and those who were wrong. He's saying some things are more important than being right. Of course you can eat meat, says Paul, but why do you look down on your brother or sister who eats only vegetables? The effort Paul is impressing on the Roman Christians is not to push for agreement on disagreements in the church, and you had better believe I have seen disagreements through the years, and we probably have too, whether it's arguing the color of a new hymn book in the pew and the carpeting in the sanctuary, or how we feel about racial justice, and who will I vote for in the presidential election? Each person will have their own convictions, Paul says. So deal with it. How are you going to treat each other? Live with each other. Work with each other and love each other when you don't agree with each other. Sure. One of these evidences of love was very much seen in the sisters and families of Sarah Santos Camacho at, at, at uh, Simpson Church. When we gathered on Wednesday to remember and celebrate the life of her dad, Reverend Dr. Raymond Santos, a pastor in our New York annual conference for 30 years. Now I didn't ask, but I would say with the generations I met at the Miller Place Funeral Home, with family origins in Puerto Rico, now living in Brooklyn, Queens, New Jersey, Massachusetts, and Pennsylvania, there are bound to be different world views and opinions, and disagreements too. But sure to be seen that day was their love for Jesus, uniting them as a family, all speaking wonderful words of life and love. It was one granddaughter who spoke with a tremendous image of faith. Each of the grandchildren were able to stand up and speak a few words about their grandfather that the three sisters did, including Sarah. The, 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 the son-in-laws were all stood up and, and shared too. There are three preachers in the family. I, I, and after we kept on going a while and a while and a while, for a two-hour service, I made the remark, well, we're, you know, I know there are three pastors in the service, but, but you're a lot, you've got a lot of preachers here, too. <laughs> so, so, that, so anyhow, when, so the granddaughter, she, this one granddaughter stood up and, and spoke, tremendous image of faith, when she told of the day of standing on the stairway in her home and jumping off into the arms of her abuelito, Grandfather Raymond. Her thoughtful words stirred you to think, am I ready to jump into the arms of God? Do I trust God enough to do that for me? It's a trust that is born in love, as the granddaughter had in her grandfather. Is our love in Jesus giving us that sort of trust 
in each other? Can I trust you if I fall? If I don't agree with you, will you catch me when I'm weak? When I'm unsteady, will you catch me? When I'm not well, will you catch me? On Friday, listening to the names on 9-11, of those who died when the Twin Towers were attacked and fell, I took note that these names were not restricted to New York, Connecticut, New Jersey, nor were the names limited to the boundaries of the United States of America. These were international names. It was an attack on the world, an international community. Is that how we are to live? Attacking each other? Looking down on your brother and sister because of culture, religion, politics, and the opinions we hold to? And the church says, Paul, Paul, Paul says, deal with it. The church is better than that. Stop judging each other. The church is better than that. Stop criticizing each other, attacking each other. The church is better than that. So let's strive for the things that bring peace and the things that build each other up, says Paul. So welcome each other in the same way that Christ also welcomed you. Jesus shows the better way, the attitude of forgiveness. In Jesus' parable of the forgiving master and the unforgiving servant, and if you take note, you'll notice that different versions, translations, use different titles for these. When Lori read the, uh, the version today, it was, it was kings and slaves. The version I read uh, was, was, uh, a master and was master and servant. But it's all the same, basically. Jesus compares the compassion of the master, releasing the servant and forgiving the loan, and that of the cold-hearted servant who grabs a fellow servant by the throat, refusing to forgive him, and throws him into prison until he paid back his debt. I point out to you two consequences of the servant's unforgiving attitude. When the master hears what's happened, he is furious. His compassion is turned into righteous anger. And he turns the servant over to, to, into, to the prison guards until he's paid the whole debt. The second consequence is to take note, in jail, it was impossible to get out of the debt. That servant was going to be in jail for an awful long time. Is that what we do to each other? Grabbing each other by the throat to imprison each other? I think this parable of unforgiveness and punishment is the story of our own woundedness when we look down on our brother and sister, judging each other instead of building each other up. In different parts of Africa, you will find a palaver tree. Ever hear of a palaver tree? It's usually large with spreading branches to shelter those who gather under it in its shade. At the palaver tree, people gather for remembrance and celebration and drum and dance and song. It's also where people gather to discuss and exchange ideas, to request advice and help, and to resolve their differences. The palaver tree is a common ground, welcoming people equally. Those who gather to listen and settle conflict know that the priority is not who is right and who is wrong, but who is best and who is not. The priority is the continued life of a community, the people united and at peace and love together. Perhaps that's the invitation to us and the church to gather under the outstretched arms of God with time enough to welcome one another without condemnation, but with forgiveness and with understanding. Our unity and strength in the church will always rest not in the opinions we share in common, but in our common love for Jesus. Amen. Amen.
So following the example of Lori, I invite you to share a touchless peace with each other today. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Go ahead and do it, Lori. Peace. Peace. on the first day of school when he drove through uh, lakes and rivers oh, and, and ponds in his bus, didn't you? I had my life to save him. <laughs> and Christina had a, quite a week in her first uh, couple of days of school as well, didn't you? I sure did. Yeah. A long week, but I made it. So prayers for schools and teachers and, and staff workers and school bus drivers and students students too. This afternoon, I get to practice the words of the message I shared with you today when we talk about how do we get along with our differences, differences of politics, difference of religion, as I go and I, I share an interfaith marriage ceremony <coughs> for our preschool director's son, Austin. He's getting married this afternoon, immediate family at the home, and we're going to celebrate that. The rabbi, the rabbi is going to zoom in from, from, uh, from Florida, and, and I'm going to be on site. So, so that will be a, a joyful event this afternoon. So I invite for your sharing and your request for prayer, and, and, and uh, um, we can join each other in our prayers with loving God here our prayer. And I'd like to share with you at the end of that prayer, the prayer that I shared at 9-11. I wanted to share with you that you know, I, when I prayed this prayer in, in, in Amityville, uh, I, I, I was thinking, well, you know, we had some kind of more political prayers that were shared that morning. and. And we weren't kind of, didn't seem to be on the same page when it finally got up to me. I, I, this was sort of the ending benediction. And I, and I was thinking, about, I don't know if I really. And, that, and then the next day, I had three or four or five people come up to me at the farmer's market in Amityville and said, Pastor, that, that prayer was really right on with what's going on in our world right now. And thank you so much for praying that. And that made me feel pretty good. So, so I'd like to just share, and I hope it will be a meaningful prayer for you, pray, for you too. So, but at first I invite you, your individual prayers, as, as we now share. Your turn first. Dear Lord, I, I pray before you, Elizabeth Stone, she was in an automobile accident, and she hasn't been able to work yet. And she had an MRI yesterday, and hopefully it's taken to result in that good thing. Loving God. Yeah. Lord God, we lift up uh, Sherry Valentino, who also works at the nursery school, who had a very, very bad heart problem and had to have a quadruple bypass. I spoke with her this morning, and uh, she's just uh, praising God to be alive and home, and that uh, she's doing well. And we just pray that she can continue to recuperate and recover and uh, get back to her uh, beautiful, loving self. Love God. Yeah. For, the, for this afternoon's uh, wedding at the Ballin House and and for the uh, the start of, of uh, Grace Nursery School this week. Loving God. Yeah. Yeah. Lord God, I just pray that uh, somehow uh, this pandemic would uh, end a lot sooner than they're predicting. That you be with all those that are suffering from it, all those that are scared to death of it, and that uh, you would just put your arms around this whole situation and just make it disappear. We ask this in my precious name, Lord God. You're up there. You're up there. Mm -hmm. God of all eight races, nations, and religions. Remind us of the love of Christ, love which leapt over cultural and ethnic boundaries to feed the hungry, seek the lost, and care for those in pain. 
Do you know we cannot change others, nor can we change the past? When our politics and opinions keep us separated in our thinking, keep us as one on a common ground, united in heart and love as one human family, bound together in the work of justice and peacemaking. Keep us one with the light that shines in the darkness, that even in the midst of COVID-19 and life's uncertainties, that our pathway would be illuminated and that we would walk together toward understanding and reconciliation. Guide our feet into the way of peace. Inspire us with the hope in the gift of shalom and grace. May we receive this gift so that we might become instruments of your peace in this world, knowing all people as equally loved, lovingly created children of God. We seek your grace as to strengthen us as we remember the sacredness of this 9-11 day and the lives of the loved ones who had been lost on this day of anguish for our country and our world. Lord, teach your children to love each other as much as they profess to love you. We come and pray in the name of Christ, as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Recognized later this afternoon, and 
And, and you know, and maybe we could uh, kind of copy that liturgy so we could kind of do it here. We can, is that, would that be okay with you in the next week or two? Um, and um, so we could, because we can't all be there and we all can't zoom in, so, so uh, it would be nice to be able to participate in that. And again, I want to remind folks that the upper rooms are here on the table if you haven't taken one. Uh, and, and, uh, and our offering plate is here. We're not able to pass that around. We can't all be touching the plate. And, and so, so we want to thank you for your offerings. And, and that is the, and that is the uh, offering that we now come to dedicate in prayer together. Let us pray. Almighty God, in our treasures all around us, family, friends, your abiding presence, and the love of Christ Jesus. Bless these gifts we return to you now. Bless them that others may come to know the true treasures of your love and grace. In your holy name we pray. Amen.